uh, discussion about grace. Uh, it's one of the most misunderstood, I believe, uh, mistaught, misinterpreted, uh, misapplied things that there is today. Uh, matter of fact, there's, a, there's an abuse of grace uh, that, is, that is going on that runs rampant in many churches and many lives because I think in, in large part because we just misunderstand it. We think it's something that it's not. And so uh, we're going to uh, continue uh, to, on this journey to discover what the Bible has to say about the grace of God. Because how many of y'all know it doesn't matter what I say, it matters what the Word of God says. Right. Amen? It doesn't matter what this guy says or this lady says or this denomination says or Hester Church says and the pastor at Hester Church says. What does matter is what the Word of God says. Yeah. Amen? I believe in the Word of God. I believe that the Scriptures are inspired. Amen? Yeah. I believe that every Word of God is breathed by God. Amen. That not one jot, not one tittle is to be done away with. Amen. Amen. It's all important. It's all applicable to our lives in one way or another. There are principles within the Word of God from the Old Testament to from Genesis to Revelation. Amen. And so none of it's done away with. None of it's not needed. We can learn from the Word of God no matter where we find it in the Word. Amen. Yeah. Many of the times throughout Scripture, even in the New Testament letters, when Paul or Peter was saying it is written, they wasn't talking about what they was writing. Right. They was talking about what was written in the Old Testament. Right. Come on, somebody. So the Word of God does not change. God Himself does not change. Amen. It doesn't change. So we need to understand that. Grace doesn't change. Great Grace has been around forever. It didn't show up on the scene. Amen. When Jesus came and died on the cross, God's grace has been around forever. It's, it's who He is. Amen. And so we begin to uh, talk about that last week. Uh, you can get the CD if he wasn't here. Uh, if he was backslid last week. And uh, you can pick up the CD. Uh, and uh, it's free of charge. Amen. 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 That's a good, that's a good thing. How many of y'all know free is good? Amen. But how many of y'all know that there's nothing free? Isn't that, isn't that funny? That we talk about, oh, it's free. There ain't nothing free. There's nothing free. Somebody always pays the price for it. <laughs> we can say, free dinner at Hester Church. It's not free. Somebody paid the price. We can say, salvation is free. It's free to you, but somebody paid the price. Come on, somebody. There's nothing free. Freedom isn't free. I preached a message about that a long time ago. Amen. Free, there's nothing free about freedom. Somebody paid the price. Amen? Right. Amen. And so thank God for the price that was paid for you and I. Can you say amen? Amen. 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 And so we're going to talk about grace. Uh, grace is, is not what we say uh, before we eat our food. Right. That's called giving thanks. Right. Amen. Amen. I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of, you know, wired this way, but, you know, somebody says, um, you know, and, and I, I, it's, just, it's just a word thing. I understand. It's a, it's, a, it's a generational thing. You know, somebody say grace, you know, and, and so, you know, me being my person, I'm like grace, you know, and that's, what does that mean? What, is, what do you mean say grace? We mean give thanks, amen? And so, so there again, grace is not what we say over our food, amen? Uh, we give thanks for our food before we eat it, Amen. We give thanks. And so grace is not just giving uh, or praying over our food. It's not something that covers sin. Nowhere in Scripture does the Word of God say grace covers sin. You can't find it. It's not in there. But well, let me tell you what is in there. It does say that love covers sin. Amen. Amen. I'm not saying that we're not covered. I'm just saying nowhere in the Bible does it say grace covers sin. But how many of y'all have ever heard that? How many of us have ever said it? I said it. I heard it. Right? And so we, we, we hear things in church and preachers say it because they heard it in church. Amen? And so and it's, it's not like, ooh, you bad people or ooh, bad preachers. Amen. We just got to understand that not everything that's said is in the Word. That's right. It's kind of like God helps them and help themselves. It's not in there. But yes, sometimes we think that that's Scripture. Right. It's not Scripture. Amen. And, and that's why I always say, you've heard me say it a, a 101 times, and I'll say it 101 more times, that that's why it is so, so, I can't overemphasize the importance of, of you and I reading the Word of God. Amen. Yep. What does the Word say? What does the Word say? What's, what's the Bible say? What's the Word of God say? 
It's so, so important for us to read the Word. <clears throat> and so uh, we, need to, we need to do that often. Amen. Um, it, it's, it, love covers sin. Uh, love covers sin. Uh, when, when defining grace, people talk about grace, they say it's unmerited favor. That's what grace is, just unmerited favor. But yet in Scripture, it says that God gives more grace. So if it's unmerited, how can we get more? If it's unmerited, we should have all there is to have. Right? Because that's what unmerited, we're, we're not earning it, we're, we can't get more of it. There's no more to be gotten. Right? If that's unmerited, if grace is only unmerited favor. I'm not saying there's a favor in God, in Christ. Amen. How I many of y'all know that it's faith, the favor of God because we've been chosen? That's the favor. God loves us. Amen. And, but it's, it's, it's not at large unmerited favor. But yet, how many of y'all have ever heard? Grace is unmerited favor. That's what we hear all along. All, all. But yet throughout Scripture, there's many different Scriptures in context that speak of grace and define for us what grace is. But yet we overlook those and we just kind of gloss over them. Because when I say talk about grace, many of you here this morning have already, I know what grace is, and so we just shut everything else off. Grace is this. Grace covers sin. Grace is unmerited favor. Because we're, we are a program, well, that's what I've heard all my life. And so that's what I've been told. That's what this preacher said, or that's what this preacher on TV said, or whatever it may be. But um, that, that's not what we should base our life on, what pre preachers say. Come on. <gasps> what do you mean? I mean that you and I have to know what the Word says. Amen? Amen. we got to know what the Word says because God uh, God moves and works according to His Word. Say amen. 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 And so, <clears throat> so uh, there, there is a favor in Christ that we didn't merit, but grace is so much more, uh, which we will see, uh, than, than unmerited, unmerited favor. Yet how many of us have, have used these definitions? We've said those things. We've said it on and on it goes. Uh, but last week we began um, uh, to see from the scriptures what grace is and what it does. In 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 8, you can follow along because I'm going to move quickly this morning. Uh, first, uh, or, I'm sorry, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, uh, verse 8, it says this. Uh, For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, or three times, that it might depart, depart from me. This is the Apostle Paul speaking, and he is saying... Three times I sought the Lord that this thing, this thorn in my flesh might depart from me. Verse 9, it says, And he said unto me, now listen to this, it says that he, he said unto me, Who said? Who said? Jesus. Jesus, the Lord. He said, I sought the Lord. Who said? The Lord. Yep. And he said to me, My great, do you know that God talks to us? <laughs> Do you know that if we're listening, that if we will stop long enough to quit talking and quit telling God what we want, what we need, and how when we need it, that if we will spend time talking, and, or, or less time talking at times, and more time listening and meditating upon His Word, how many of y'all know that God will never say something to you that contradicts His Word? Amen. Amen. Never. I don't care what you say God says, if it contradicts his word, it was pepperoni pizza talking to you. Right. <laughs> Late at night, you ate too much pepperoni pizza. An MSG devil, that the MSG demon came came out of the pepperoni. <laughs> I knew I'd get Susan to check on that one. I knew I'd get her on that one. But but God will never say something, He will never speak something to you that contradicts his word his writ the scripture amen you with me the scripture he'll never do it <clears throat> but yet i have heard people say god told me and it completely contradicts the word but yet they are dead set that god told me see let me let me tell you what god told me is let me tell you how a lot of christians use god told me god told me is the ultimate trump card that no matter who tries to tell me otherwise, God told me. So it doesn't matter what counsel says. It doesn't matter what the pastor says. It doesn't matter what this person says or that person says. Because God told me. And then we, we completely... Are you with me? No. Amen. So God will never say anything to us that contradicts 
His Word. Matter of fact, in the book of Galatians, the Apostle Paul, he, he comes back to the church of Galatia, and he says, what is happening? What has happened to you guys? He said, how is it that you have fallen from grace? What do you mean fallen from grace? He, because they started to do in their flesh again. They thought they could be justified by the works of the law again. It's no longer, then he goes on to say, he says, what, has, what the Spirit has begun in you, do you think it can be now perfected by the flesh, by works? It's the power, we can't do it in our own power. It's not by rules and regulations, it's by the power of God. That's the grace, the power, the ability of God the, to do in us and for us to be able to do what we can't do independent of the grace of God. Y'all out there this morning? Yep. Do we need a coffee break? Are y'all with me? Amen. Is it the weather? Is it cloudy and rainy? And just everybody's kind of humdrum this morning? Amen. Are you with me? Amen. See, this is the kind of church you talk to the preacher. Amen. Amen. You don't have to sit in silence. You, don't, you can talk to the preacher. Are you with me? Yeah. Are you with me? What did I just say? <laughs> See, I knew it. Sleeping. No, I'm just teasing. I'm teasing. Listen, Second Corinthians says this. I besought the Lord. He said to me, my grace. The Lord said to him, my grace. Everybody say grace. Grace, grace is sufficient for thee. Watch this. Same context. For my strength, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. <clears throat> Most gladly, therefore, I will glory in my infirmities. Watch that the power of Christ may rest upon me. So right here in context, in a conversation that Paul is having with the Lord, amen, the Lord says, my grace is sufficient for thee. For in my strength uh, is, uh, in, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. That's the Lord talking. This is Paul talking. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Amen. You understand this? He asked the Lord, Lord, I'm, I'm struggling with this thing. This is this messenger of Satan. Lord, deliver me. Send me do this. Lord, he says, my grace is sufficient. This is the Lord answering. My grace is sufficient. My strength is made perfect in weakness. Paul talking most gladly this. So he's saying, the Lord said this to me. This is what the Lord said to me. He said, my grace is sufficient for thee. My strength. So grace and strength are synonymous. Amen. Yeah. Okay, you with me? They're synonymous here. And then Paul says, most gladly, therefore, after what the Lord has said to me, I will glory my firmness that the power Amen. of Christ may rest upon me. Grace, strength, and power are synonymous. Amen. They're all the same thing. Are you with me? Okay. Now, in James chapter 4, verse 6. But he giveth more grace. Everybody say more. more. How many of y'all would like to have more grace? <laughs> How many of y'all realize that we need more grace? Amen. See, if there's no more to get, if it's unmerited, then how can there be more? Right. Right. Yeah. If I have all there is to have, why would I need more? Why would God give more grace to the humble? Yeah. See, humble people receive grace because humble people realize that they can't do it by themselves. Right. Right. Are you with me? Yeah. Wherefore he saith, God resi resisteth the proud, but giveth Grace to the humble. Amen. Isn't that, isn't that interesting? That God resists the proud. Pride stinks up a place. Pride will stink up a life. Come on, somebody. Amen. God resists the proud. That's pretty powerful. Think about that one for a while. God will resist you in pride. What's pride say? I got this. I don't, need, I don't need the power of God. I don't need God. I'm, you know what? I'm, I'm getting so good at this. I can do it myself. Yeah. I'm, you know what? I'm, I've been preaching for so long now. I don't even need God. Right. What do I need God for? I know the word so good. What do I need God for? <coughs> Come on. Because with a, y'all sort of go, oh, 
Oh, preacher. Oh, yeah, that'd be terrible. You know what? It's the same for you. Yeah, that's right. how, you, you realize how many Christians think I got this guy? You might not be up here preaching behind the pulpit, but you still got pride. That's right. You still got the same thing. So before you get to who, who preacher, who, who, yeah, I can't believe you'd say, who, what are you saying, who, who, yeah, don't do that, preacher. Better who, who, who yourself. <laughs> Some of y'all get a little too happy about who and the preacher. Who, yeah, mm -hmm, yeah, oh, that's right, yes, you are. Oh, yes. How many of y'all know that regardless of who you are, grace has made you that? Amen. That's right. Amen. Doesn't matter. Regardless of who you are, the power of God, and, and we'll, we'll see this. We're going to see it. It's right in the Word. We're going to see it. Has made us who we are. But God says, He or the Word says, says that He giveth. He giveth. Who gives? God gives. God giveth more grace. The reason that I need more grace is because there's more of you. Hallelujah, Jesus. <laughs> ooh. Ah, oh, ooh. <laughs> Amen. We need, I need grace to pastor. You need grace to be a mother. Stay at home mom. Come on somebody. You need grace to work in a factory. You need grace to teach at the schools. Come on somebody. See, when we try to do it in our own, see that's why, that's why God's not impressed with plaques and titles and degrees. Because see, that's all about human strength. Anybody can learn stuff. But see, and a lot of people put a lot of pride in their plaques. They got plaque pride. Yeah. Oh, that's in scripture. <laughs> <laughs> right? They got plaque pride. Come on, somebody. Doctor this. Pete this. Whatever. I have none of that. <laughs> and, and, but, but, it's, but it's the power of God. See, if it was all, if it was simply, if it was dependent upon how many plaques and degrees and all that stuff I had for God to use me, how many of y'all know we'd all be in big, big trouble? Come on, somebody. Amen. But it's not, it's, it's the grace of God, it's the power of God. See, God chose the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. How is it that I do what I do? By the grace of God. How is it that you do what you do? By the grace of God. Amen. See, but we need more grace. So I humble myself. You know, and let me tell you, let me just say this. God is very good at doing His job. That's right. <laughs> Come on. See, the Bible says, the Word says right here, it says, humble yourself. He gives grace to the humble. And it says that He resists the proud. So humble, when we humble ourselves, yeah. right, that is us doing our job. <laughs> but yet, if we want to exalt ourselves, that is us doing God's job. Right. Amen. Come on. Come on. And see, if we start trying to do God's job by exalting ourselves, God says, Well, you're trying to put me out of a job. Right. Yep. You know what? I guess I'll do your job. Yep. And then He humbles you. Yep. That's right. <laughs> Come on, somebody. See, I can't do what I do. In my own strength. Oh, there's been times. There's been times. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Woo, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then all of a sudden, it's like, oh, no. Oh, no. Right? Right? You start exalting. You start getting a little proud. Come on, somebody. Don't act like you ain't ever had no pride about something. Come on. You start getting a little prideful about something. You start thinking, man, I'm really good at this. Man, we're really good at this. I can praise to you. Oh, man, we're really good. We're really good. Yeah. Let me tell you something. There was a time. They are good. They're good. But let me tell you something. If it was not for the grace of God, Amen. they wouldn't be doing what they're doing. Let me tell you something. I was, you see, some of you come in, you think, wow, man, they're really good. They ain't always been that good. Come on. <laughs> let me tell you, there was a time. <laughs> there was a time, it's like, let's shorten up the song service. <laughs> Short enough. Okay, that's enough of that already. Come on, somebody. Amen. But see, they they they, they continue to say, God, we, we just give this to you, God. God, we need you. God help us. God anoint us. God empower us. God help us to play. God help us to sing. God help us to do what we do because we can't, we're not good enough. Amen. Come on. That's right. 
God says, oh, I like that humility. I like that humility where they realize it ain't about them. That's right. They realize that the only good in them is me. Yep. Come on, somebody. Oh, it's so easy to call up in pride. I used to have this brother of mine tell me, he goes, somebody come up to me and say, uh, you know, they, they say, oh man, that's a, man, that's an awesome servant. Oh man, that's a powerful word, blah, blah. But it, it always seemed like somebody was always around me and said, oh, don't say that, he'd get a big head. <laughs> <laughs> Heaven forbid yeah. that we pay anybody a compliment, right. especially the pastor, because he, he'll get big headed. <laughs> Listen. Anytime I get big headed, God's got a job to do. Come on, somebody. And He's real good at doing it. Amen. Amen. And He has anointed my wife to do it. <laughs> my wife is anointed by God to humble her husband. Glory to God. Amen. I come home and I. Well, you know what? When you start putting your underwear really long, then talk to me. <laughs> oh, anointed one. Why don't you use some anointing on that? <laughs> Will you learn how to put some dishes in the dishwasher then come see me? Oh, anointed one. <laughs> oh, glory. I know every other husband, every other wife, your husband, you've got to be well trained already. My wife's still, I'm still a work in progress. Amen. Amen. In 1 Peter chapter uh, 4, verse 10, it says this. It says, Every man that hath received the gift, say the gift. Yeah. Yeah. Every man that has received the gift, even so, minister the same one to another as good stewards. Everybody say good stewards. Good stewards. Now watch this. Good stewards of... Okay, you with me? What are we being stewards of? The manifold grace of God. We are to be good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Verse 11 says, If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as the ability. Everybody say ability. Ability. As the ability which God giveth, that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Last week we seen that grace is, number one, God's ability working in us. Amen. The grace of God is God's ability working in us. Number two, grace is the power of God in human weakness, as the Apostle Paul says. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 28, Wherefore we receive in a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace. Everybody say, have it. Amen. Whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. Grace is the power and strength whereby you and I can serve God. And without it, we can't serve Him acceptably. Amen. See, without the grace of God, without the, the power of God in our lives, what we as people, especially religious people, tend to do is we begin to determine and dictate what is acceptable to God. Ooh, it's getting wild. <laughs> See, grace is the power of strength whereby we can serve God. It says, uh, let us have grace whereby we may serve God. So with the grace, with grace, we can serve God and serve Him acceptably, with reverence and with godly fear. Can I get a witness that we need the power of God to serve Him? Amen. When we try to start serving God in our own strength, in our own power, in our own wisdom, in our own abilities, our own natural flesh man, we will fail miserably. We'll fail miserably. We're not even a Christian this morning without the grace of God without the power of God working in us. In Romans chapter 8, verse 11, it says this, the spirit that raised Jesus from the dead will give life to our mortal bodies. In Ephesians 2, 6, it says this, and hath, uh, uh, and hath raised us, everybody say raised us, hath raised us up together. It's the spirit, it's the power of God that raises us up. 
It raised us up and made us to sit together in heavenly places. We are not sitting anywhere with Jesus unless it's by His power and by His grace, which are synonymous in Scripture. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 7, that in the ages to come He might show the exceeding riches of His grace in His kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. Can, 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 you, under, can you be with me here? That if it, it's going to take the ages to come for us to even comprehend the grace of God. How many of y'all know we don't have all the answers now? <laughs> we don't. We don't. See, the Bible even tells us that now we see through a glass dimly. It's, it's dim to us. We, we don't see everything clearly. Come on. Okay? But then, then when? When Christ comes, when we are called up, when we go home to be with the Lord, the Bible says we will know Him even as we are known. Wow. How many of y'all know that if we see dimly now, and then we'll know as we are known? Known how? Known by Him? How many of y'all understand that God knows you inside and out, top to bottom, every nook and cranny? That's right. That's right. There's nothing about you that He doesn't know. Amen. There's nothing hidden. I don't care how many fig leaves you put on, you're not hiding nothing from God. Amen. You, you can dress up and you can hide stuff and you can carry a Bible. You can say amen. You can shake your head and, and agree with the preacher. But God is not fooled by outward show. Come on, somebody. I can dance and I can, woo, I can twist and I can, I can do the Pentecostal helicopter. Woo! Amen. But if my heart is dirty and unclean, God's not fooled, but you are. That's right. That's right. Come on. Come on, somebody. Oh, we see people. Amen. 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 Yes, yes, yes. Amen. They'll be going, oh, me. Oh, me. Oh, me. Come on, somebody. Amen. But oh, we'll just dance and we'll raise our hands and we'll clap. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, Jesus. Amen. But yet God is not fooled. Look at your neighbor and say, you ain't fooling no one, sucker. No, no don't Come on, damn. <laughs> I, love, I love when I say that. Guys are like, I ain't saying that to my wife. I'm just going on right here. I seen this, I seen this little uh, uh, tidbit on, on um, a family feud or something. It's like, if your wife's something like that, and two guys up there, certainly a hundred guys, if your wife's something like that, and there's up there and there's like, <laughs> I'm not answering that. <laughs> they, wouldn't, they wouldn't answer, man. It was, it was hilarious. But anyway, so it, it, we, we have to understand that we are who we are by the grace of God. We don't have, we don't have all the answers, but we have enough. Amen? Yeah. Amen. We have enough of, of what God is showing us here in His Word. Amen. For by grace are you saved through faith. By grace you are saved. What saved you? Unmerited favor? No. What saved you? Grace that covers your sin? No. That is not what saved you. In John chapter 1, verse 12, look what it says. But as, remember, power and grace are synonymous. Right. Right. But as many as received him, to them he gave the power right. to become. Grace is the ability to be and to become what you cannot become and be. Uh, independent of the grace of the power of God. Amen. Are you with me? Yeah. We can't. We can't save ourselves. It's by the power of God we're saved. It's by grace. It's by the power that transforms our life. It's by the power of God that engrafts us into the natural branches. That's right. It's the power of God. It's not what we do. It's not our works. It's by faith we receive it. We receive the word of God. We receive that grace. We receive the power. God changed me. God saved me. We're saved by grace, by His power, by His tra the transformation that takes place, by the same Spirit that raised Christ Jesus from the dead. Amen. He saves us. He draws us. Amen. He convicts us. He moves upon us. That's His power at work in our lives. It's the power of God at work in our lives. He said He gave the power to become. The power to become. Grace to become. The sons. By grace we're saved. By the power of God working in our lives we're saved. Even to them that believe on His name. Verse 13 says, Which were born, watch this, not of blood, nor of the 
we would not have the power to become anything in Christ. Amen. Because it's literally grace that puts us in Christ. It's the power of God that puts us in Christ. It's the power of God that moves upon our hearts uh, and puts us in Christ. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 9, it says this. Apostle Paul speaking, he says, For I am the least of the apostles, that I uh, that, that am not meet to be called or not fit to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. Do you realize, look at me, look, look at me down here. Do you realize how many Christians walk around and say, I'm not worthy? Paul is not in condemnation here. That's right. <laughs> See, there is a difference. There, there is a forgetting that we have not mastered. Paul said, I forget the things that are behind me and I press on towards the mark, towards the high call of Christ Jesus. See, Paul here, we say, man, Paul must have got into condemnation. Somebody was condemning him. Somebody, oh, Christ, somebody said something bad about him. Paul's not in condemnation here. Are you with me? He's reflecting. See, forgetting doesn't mean forgetting. You, you and I are never going to forget. We're never going to forget. And it's like somebody saying, well, you haven't forgiven them until you forget it. How terrible is that? I mean, to walk around and, and, and be, get all condemned, like I haven't forgiven them, I still haven't forgot it yet. And so somehow, forgiving and forgiveness mean the same thing. That is ridiculous. There are people that have done things to me that I haven't forgot about, but I have forgiven them. That's right. Come on. Come on, somebody. Amen. And so Paul is, is he's, 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 this isn't a condemnation thing. It's a reflection and almost kind of like an inventory. He's taking, now watch this. Watch, stay with me. It says, because I persecuted the church of God. But, everybody say but. But. <laughs> See, this is where it takes a turn. He's like, yeah, I was, I, you know what? I was a scoundrel. He, I, I was a no good, dirty dog. He goes, man, I was, you know, like some of you. Right. Try not to look at anybody. <laughs> we were all scoundrels. We were all enemies of God. I don't care if you was raised in church your whole life. You was an enemy of God until you said, Jesus saved me. Amen. Forgive me of my sins. You don't get to heaven because your, your parents are saved, because your parents bring you to church. You are saved by the power of God. You are saved because you call on the name of the Lord. Amen. And, and confess your sins, repent, and say, God saved me. That's how you're saved. That's how you're saved. Not because you come to church, but because... Church has come to you. Yep. Come on, somebody. Amen. It's, it's in you. It's something that takes place. It's the grace of God. He says, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. So see, he's reflecting to the man. Have you ever, have you ever, I mean, I don't, I don't know how you are with this, but it's like, especially in ministry, it's like I sit there and I, I, I there's times I sit there and I think, I thought, man, I am not worthy. Right. I'm not worthy. To be called a pastor. Because man, I, I know none, none of us are worthy. Watch, well, stay, with, well, stay with me. I'm not worthy of that. And we're not. We're not worthy of it in our flesh. We're not worthy of it because we do this good and we do that good. Because if it's just about how good we do, then all of us would fall short. In somebody's eyes anyway. Come on, somebody. Amen. But see, Paul here, so he's saying, he goes, he goes I'm the least. He goes, I'm not meat. He goes, I'm not even fit to be called an apostle. Because I, he says, man, because I, you know what, I got a past. But then he says, listen, because it's not about my past. It's not about me. It's not about the flesh. It's not about how good I am or how good I was. Right. Come on, somebody. It's not about how good I've been, how good I was, or how good I'll be. Right. But, by, but the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace was bestowed upon me was not in vain. <laughs> wow, watch this. He goes, but I labored more abundantly than they all. Who? Now see, when you stop there, you think, man, Paul's kind of bragging here. 
Paul's kind of full of himself here. No, he's not. What's the next next line? He says, but I labor more abundantly than they all. Yet, not I, but the grace of God which was with me. Amen. See, Paul realized a very, very important principle here. A very important truth that we've got to get a hold of in the church. Amen. That it's not by strength, it's not by power, not by the arm of flesh, but it's by my spirit, saith the Lord. Amen. That's how we overcome. That's how we, that's how we do what we do in the kingdom. That's how we make a difference for eternity. Amen. It's by the power of God. By submitting ourselves, humbling ourselves, and realizing, God, if you don't help us, if you don't give us the strength, we're not going to make it. That's right. That's right. We can't do it without you. Oh, we can do it. Oh, we could. Oh, yeah. We can sense for people that, oh, I can do it. I can do it. You realize how many how many people are doing it on their own? And they're tired. They're wore out. They're just like, oh, I just, oh, I just can't. Oh, I'm just so tired. I'm so tired. Get some more grace. Come on, somebody. Do you think Paul wasn't tired? Do you think Paul didn't say, man, I'd like to sleep in this morning? That's right. Come on. Come on, somebody. Amen. But the grace of God, he did what he did. <laughs> Jesus, the Apostle Paul, all the men and women of God did what they did by the grace of God. Amen. Became what they had become by the grace of God. And we look at these men and women, we put them up on these pedestals, and we think, wow, look at them. I'm not Paul. I'm not Jesus. I'm not this person. I'm not that person. Blah, 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 blah. You're right. You're not. <laughs> You're not supposed to be them. Right. You're supposed to call on the grace of God and say, God, I need you. God, I'm weak, but you are strong. See, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. See, grace is the ability to do what we can't do in ourselves. It's through grace that Christ is strength. It's the power of God, and we see that. Amen. See, imagine Paul. I imagine he was a very humble man. Not weak, but humble. See, there's something to be said of a person that remembers what God has done in them that remembers what God is doing in them and what God will do in them. See, here's the thing. I don't care how long you've been a Christian. I don't care how many times you've read through your Bible. I don't care how many scriptures you've quote to me. Amen? It does not matter. It, it does not matter. Your strength is not in you. You will never arrive. You will never, nor will I, ever graduate or arrive and no longer be in need of the grace of God. That's right. We will always be in need of the grace of God. And as soon as we think we're not, we have fallen from grace. And then we start to do religious stuff in our own power and in our own strength. Are you with me? See, in Romans 5, this is the one that a lot of, a lot of people misquote and they, mis, they misapply. It says, moreover the law entered that the offense might abound. But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. How many of y'all ever heard that one? And so we think, see, grace has got me covered. That's not what it said. See, sin has a power. Can I get a witness? Amen. There is power. Sin, there's a power to sin. It, 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 and we'll see here in Romans 6 that there's a power that is involved in sin. In verse uh, uh, chapter 5, verse 21, it says, that is, that is, as sin hath reigned in the death, even so grace reigned through righteousness unto life, our eternal life by Jesus Christ. Oh, now watch Romans 6, 14. For sin shall not have dominion over you. Everybody say it won't have dominion. It will not have dominion over you. Okay? For you are not under the law, but under grace. See, anyone that sins realizes that there is a power uh, that there is power to sin. That sin, anyone that is trapped or in bondage to sin, sin has dominion over you. But where sin abounds, grace much more does abound. So that doesn't mean that no matter how much I sin, God's got me covered. So then that's why people continue to live in sin. Because they think no matter how much sin abounds in my life, no matter how much sin I do, grace covers me. That's right. And that's why Christians live in bondage throughout most of their Christian life. 
because they're trying to be free from something that they don't have the power to be free from. Amen. But I got good news this morning. Amen. Come on. <laughs> that when you are weak, He's strong. Amen. That His grace is sufficient for thee. That where sin abounds, where, you, where sin has dominion over you, where it controls your life, there is enough power in grace. The grace of God is sufficient. No. The grace of God is sufficient for thee. Yep. There is more power available to free us from sin than there is power to keep us in bondage to sin. Amen. Thank you for four people that said amen. The rest of you must be free completely. Let me say it again. There is, there is more power to free you from sin than there is to keep you in sin. That's where the grace abounds. That there is not a devil in hell that can keep you in bondage that the, our God, our Father in heaven cannot free you from. That the chains cannot be broken. Amen. Not anything that can keep you if you don't want to be kept. I said if you don't want to be kept. You know the scripture that says when you get sick and tired of being sick and tired. God won't take nothing from you you don't want to give him. That's right. See it's called relationship. See, it's when we yield, when we submit, when we say, Father, not my will be done, but your will be done. Amen. And a lot of us aren't there. That's right. Because we want what we want, how we want it, when we want it. We want, we want to dictate to God how He blesses us and when He blesses us. He's like the cosmic slot machine. <laughs> you know, I'll just say, anytime I need something from God, I'll go to Him. But we live contradictory lives that are not acceptable to Him. Grace has got me covered. God understands. God understands my situation. And it's okay for me to be doing what I'm doing because grace has got me covered. We'll leave it at that. See, when we humble ourselves, God gives us grace. He gives us more grace. See, when we attempt to do it in our own strength, that's pride, and God resists us. <coughs> Self-righteousness and willpower only leads to religious elitism. That's all it does. There's, there's people that are like, well, I quit smoking. What's wrong with you? Just quit. <laughs> Just quit. What's wrong with you? I quit drinking. Why don't you just quit it? I quit doing this. I quit sleeping around. I quit doing that. I quit doing that. Why don't you just quit it? Wow. Good for you. And all that does is it leads to this religious elitism that those religious people just look down on you. Can you believe what they're doing? Look at them. Still smoking. How oh, they that actually think they're a Christian. They act like they're Christian. Look at them shout, drink and run around. Now, I'm not saying it's okay. Right. But see, God will only free those who want to be free. Come on, somebody. Right. Look at them. They're still sleeping around. Still fornicating. I'm not saying it's okay. And it's not. Did y'all hear me say that? It's not acceptable behavior as a Christian. Right. Right. God understands. Yeah, He understands that you're in sin. Right. He understands completely. That you want to do what you want to do. You rationalize it, make all kinds of excuses for it. Well, God is love. It's okay. God understands. Yeah, and that's what Jesus meant when he's on the cross, bleeding in agony for your sin. Yeah. It's okay, I keep doing it. It's okay, I got this. Amen or oh me. See, religious elitism comes in. It's easy to look down on someone when you didn't have the problem. By quitting on your own. 
I did it myself. What's wrong with you? Well, good for you. I'm happy for you. Good, almighty one. Right? And you, you know these people. You've met these people. They got like an air about them. You know, they're just like... We, we can do a whole little series on... <laughs> religious... Religious people. You, you, you got to see it now. We'll go out on the street, you know, has a, hey, <laughs> you know, so on and so forth. <laughs> Jesus dealt with these people his whole life. Remember them? <laughs> Remember those people Jesus dealt with? Yes. Right? See, listen carefully. There will always be people that do nothing but criti criticize what God has called you to do. And it didn't stop Jesus, and so it shouldn't stop us. Right. Come on, somebody, because it's grace. And I'm not talking about constructive criticism. I'm not talking about uh, correction and, and rebuke and, and, and chastisement and things of that nature. We all, those are part of Scripture. Did you know that? All Scripture is given for reproof, for rebuke, for correction, for edification, so that the man or woman of God may be perfected. Okay? So I'm not talking about constructive criticism. I'm talking about criticism for the sake of criticizing. Yep. Religious elitism. I don't want you to be better. I want you to keep failing so I can think I'm better than you. Right. <laughs> Ooh. Amen. Ooh. See, I don't want you. I, you know, I talk about how you're doing this, and, and, but I'm like talking about it. See, the Bible tells the spiritual people the elite people, which aren't really spiritual anyway, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay? But it says to spiritual people, he said, you who are spiritual, look it up, baby, it's in there, it's like ragu. You that are spiritual, you that are spiritual, go to the one that is in sin. Right. Come on. But consider yourself. It says, do it in a spirit of gentleness. Consider yourself. See, you know these people, there's no gentleness at all. Why don't you just stop? Why don't you this? Why don't you just need to? I get it. Blah, 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 all this stuff. It's like, wow, well, man. Okay. I'll get right on that. And then people try and they try to quit. And they try and they try. And they're like, I gotta, because they want, hi, what do I do? What do I do? I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try. And they try, 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 try. In their own strength. They never humble themselves and say, you know what, God? I want to live acceptably to you. In every part of my life, in every way, every facet, every phase, every day, 24-7, I want my life to be acceptable to you. Amen. That it would honor you, that it would glorify you. But God, in case you didn't know, I can't do it myself. I don't want to keep looking at pornography. I don't want to keep smoking and drinking and chewing and cussing and fornicating and everything else, but there's a power there. There's something I just I can't get away from it. God, I humble myself. I repent, God. I say, I need your help. I need the grace of God to break the power of that sin in my life. For by grace, you're saved. By grace, you are kept. Amen? Amen. When we do all that we've done, we can do. It's still by grace. It's still by His power. Amen? Amen? See, the last thing that we need, the last thing that we need in our lives is, uh, is you know, Debbie Downer, you know. It's just always talking down to you. Always just talking down. Talking down. That's spiritual. That's religious elitism. The last thing we need is Donnie don't do. <laughs> Run around. And if your name's Debbie or Donnie, I don't mean I'm not talking about you. Mm -hmm. It's just a sound of good. You know what I'm saying? So here you got Debbie down, always talking down to you. Or you got Donnie don't do. Don't do this, don't do that, don't, 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 don't. Don't down. Down and don't. Right? And we understand, we know that. Paul knew that. He says, man, I see something at work in me. There's something going on. The good that I want to do, that's how oh, man, there's, a, there's this power. There's this struggle. There's this battle going on within me. Who shall deliver me? Thanks 
somebody. Thanks be to God. Amen. He will deliver. He will set free. God does not want you. He did not die for you to live the way you continue to live. He died to set you free. And as soon as you quit trying to do it yourself, and you say, you know, instead of just singing the song, until you start saying, God, I'm not exactly sure how to do it or how to go about doing it, but God, I humble myself. God, I need your help. I need the grace of God in my life, God. I can't do it myself. Anytime I find myself struggling and stumbling, it's because I try to do it myself. Anytime I find myself getting discouraged and just burn out and just, you know, just, you know what? I quit. I'm done with this. It's because I'm doing it myself. The flesh gets in there. There's a whole nother. We're going to get into all this. But we get in our flesh. It's not really about the grace of God. The enemy gets in. It's all about us. Look what I've done for the church. Look what I've done. And on and on it goes. And it's all about you. It's all about what you have done. And what we need to realize, it's not me. But it's the grace of God. That's why I am who I am. First Peter 4.10, let me move quickly. It says, As every man has received the gift, even so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. The word manifold here means marked by diversity or multivarious, different types, okay? We're to be good stewards of the various types of grace, stewards of the gift of the abilities in God's grace that we have received. It's not ours, it's His. It's not our strength, it's His. If you've been born again, there's a grace that you have received. There is a power and an ability that you now have that you didn't have, that you didn't have to do what you couldn't do without it. There is something you have now It's called grace. It's called uh, the power of God that now you can do for Him what you couldn't do in your own strength. There's a grace there for it. So he goes on to say, if any man speak, let him do it the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as the ability, the ability or the grace which God giveth. See, whatever it is that we do, we need grace to do it. Can you say amen? amen. Whatever it is we do, we need, I don't care if you're a stay-at-home mom, you're a, a businessman, you're this. I need God's grace. I need His power. I don't want to do what I do in the flesh. Amen? I don't want to do it in the flesh. I need His power. I need His grace. When we do what we do in our own power and in our own ability, independent of the grace of, of God's power, we are going to eventually burn out. We'll burn out when we do it in our own strength. We'll get, we'll get disgruntled. We'll get bitter because it's, it's in our strength. It's like we're trying to flesh something out. And we're, we're not dependent on God. We've got into pride. We've got, it, we've got hurt. We've got this. We've got that. And now all of a sudden it's just like, it's like a labor. It's like, ugh, ugh, I've got to come to church. Ugh, i got to help the children's church. i got to go to the nursery today. i got to sing and pray that morning. <laughs> I gotta get behind the pulpit and preach. <laughs> oh, I've been there a few times. Y'all have seen this. And I've seen look at it's amazing. Y'all been, yeah, we have. You've been quiet the whole service. I said, y'all have seen this before. You're like, oh yeah. Amen, brother. <laughs> We get it, we're just, oh, it's, oh, it's like a labor. So we're laboring. And it's, there's, see, his burden is light. Amen. His yoke is not. It's, it's because, why is it? Why? Because I'm not carrying it in my own strength. Amen. I'm, I'm doing what I'm doing by the grace of God. I'm not carrying, come to me. Oh, you're the burden of heavy labor. And I will give you, we can rest in God. It's his strength. I don't have to do it by myself. Maybe I'm just tired. I'm tired. I'm burning out. Well, let me tell you something. It's better to burn out than to fade away, baby. Amen. <laughs> Some of y'all know that one. It's better to burn out than to fade away. Ow! 
Oh, blah, 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 all right? That's true. You know what? If I want to burn out for Jesus, let me burn out. I don't want to just fade away. Right. Let me burn out. But you know what? If we're doing it in our, in, by the grace of God, we won't burn out. That's right. We won't. I'm telling you, we won't. I'm not saying we don't, we don't, we don't struggle. We don't go through those kind of those seasons in our life. But if you're hanging out in the the, the continual rain cloud, who was that? Well, you know, everywhere they go, <laughs> just rain cloud. It's like oh, I just can't, you know. And it's what? Eeyore. 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 I thought, oh, I thought, well, what was the other one with the dust cloud? Linus? Pig pen. Pig, yeah, remember that guy? Pig pen. Remember that guy? Just, oh, it's just a big old dust cloud. Dirt. Oh, it's just so dirty. It's just so hard to serve Jesus. You know, rain, it's always raining. Oh, it's a poor me. Cry me, remember? Let me tell you something. I have cried several rivers. Come on. I've cried several rivers and I walked around kicking the dirt. Don't just clap. Stir it up. Look at somebody. If you're visiting, this is normal. Don't think about it. <laughs> See, when I just said it, you're like, really? <laughs> um, but, but we've all been there. So what am I saying? I'm saying that when we do it ourselves, then there's rain clouds, there's <coughs> dust, and it's just, it's laborious. Yep. But when we do it with the grace of God, it's not a burden to do what we do. Yeah. Because I'm not carrying it by myself. I'm not carrying it by myself. Oh, you tired, Pastor. Get over it. Everybody's tired. I'm tired. You're tired. Everybody's tired. Oh, I'm just, I'm just wore so thin. I wish I was thinner. You don't think I'm not wore thin? But oh, man, the expectations on the pastor. The pastor's supposed to do that. That's why we pay him. I'm gonna leave that alone. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Might have to give myself another pay cut. <laughs> now watch. It says verse eleven. Any man speak, let him do it. Says, See, whatever we do, we do it by the grace of God. If we don't, we will soon become bitter, and we'll have this sense of entitlement. Look what I do for the church. Look at the sacrifices I make for the church. Look at how much I give to the church. Look, 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 look at me. Little chip on the shoulder. Look at what I've done for that preacher. Was it you or was it the grace of God? There you go. Because see, if it's the grace of God, then you can't take credit for it. That's right. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Amen. See, in John chapter 1, let me, let me wrap it up. First closing. Here we go. In John chapter 1, verse 14, I don't think it's up there, Susan. Can you find it for me, please? John chapter 1. Verse 14. Watch this. I'm wrapping it up. Verse 14. Second verse. Same as the, not as the first. Verse 14. During this brief intermission. <laughs> this, this, was, this was an afterthought. After I, I was in my office, I was looking over and I was praying instead, kind of looking at everything. This was, a, this was something I afterthought here. Now watch this. That's why I wasn't on her, Susan. Okay, so it says, And the Word was made flesh, speaking of who? Jesus. Jesus. The Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and, and we beheld His glory. We sing a song earlier, Glory, glory. And we beheld His glory. Can you just think about that for a minute? We, they beheld Him. They beheld the glory. Holiness of the God. Oh, man, this is, anyway, that's a whole other sermon. Watch this. And we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten, Watch this. Full of grace. Grace and truth. Truth. Full of what? Grace and truth. Grace and 
truth. Now watch this. This will help us. Okay? When Jesus was here on the earth. You with me? Yeah. When Jesus was here on the earth. Can I get a witness that Jesus was the body of Christ? Amen. Yes. <laughs> okay? Jesus was the literal body of the Lord Jesus Christ. Are you with me? Shake your head on spiritual. Okay. All right. Now what? In him, he was full, full of grace and truth. Without measure. Without measure. He was full of grace and truth. Now watch this. Who is the body of Christ in the earth today? Who, who, not what, who is the body of Christ? We are. We, we are. are. Notice, notice that no one said, I am. No one said, if you did, you're an eagle maniac. I am. I'm the body of Christ. No. We. Everybody say we. Now go like this. Go. We. 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 Remember that commercial? Man, my favorite. And there ain't nothing like it, baby, in a 71 Nova. Wee, wee, wee! With 450 horsepower, baby. Oh, okay, anyway, that's a whole other thing. Inside. It's, it's for sale. Let's take up a special offering for your pastor. Oh, in the name of Jesus. Now, watch this. We are the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. There are not, there is not one person among us that has the fullness of grace. That's why there's manifold grace. There are various types of grace. Various uh, uh, levels of grace in the sense of there's enough grace for you and I collectively together to accomplish the fullness of His will in the earth. But we can't do it by ourselves. See, there, there has He has set amongst the body many members. Yep. I'm not Uberu Nuno. Nuno, that's not right. It's not Nuno. It's not. Okay. <laughs> Numero Uno. Is that right? Did I say it right this time? I'm the... <laughs> I am not Uberu... <laughs> okay, let's go. I'm not number one here. You understand what I'm saying? But we together, we make up the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. See, why is there manifold? Why are there various types of grace? Because not all of us have the same calling. That's right. Amen. But we have the grace of God to accomplish it together. Amen. Come on, somebody. See, we have the grace. We have the power. I've got the power. You heard that one? Amen. We have the power to accomplish great things, but we cannot accomplish it uh, 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 opposite of each other, nor can we accomplish it in our own strength. strength. Amen. But by the grace of God, we are who we are. Amen. Can you say that? Stay with me this morning.